And now to the main news. 263 newly appointed vice principals of secondary schools in Ogun State have been inducted with a mandate to make to take charge of the administration and smooth running of their schools for better output in collaboration with their principals. The induction ceremony was conducted by the chairman of Ogun State Teaching Service Commission, Evangelist Olale Fede, at the Lishabi Grammar School Hall, Abeokuta. Matthew Shoumi completes the report. <laughs> One hundred and sixty-three newly appointed vice principals of secondary schools being inducted to ensure smooth management, conflict resolution, and provide interface between teachers, students, and principals of schools in Ogun State by the chairman of the State Teaching Service Commission, Evangelist Olalekon Ifede. Evangelist Ifede advised them to see their new position beyond providing leadership, but must be partners in progress with the heads of their various schools and the government so as to help in improving the quality and standard of education in secondary schools. Uh, when I came in, I stepped down the inductions of my principal so that they would be in the classrooms for some time. But we thank God for our, our governor who gave us that opportunity to recruit more teachers. Chairman of the induction ceremony, Honorable Ademola Adeleye, while spelling out their defined roles in the schools, urged them to justify their selection by working hard to improve the fortune of education in the states. A supporter of their principals to administer good administration in that school. One, to make sure that they build bridge among the students, their parents, the principal, and the entire populace. Other stakeholders in the education sector appreciated the state government for prioritizing the welfare of teachers in the school. The new vice principals promised to give their best as a way of showing appreciation to the government. Every teacher in the education industry of the state desires to attain the acme, the apogee of this profession. And uh, that we are inducted today as vice principal, it is a signal to the fact that very soon we shall, by his grace, become principals of schools. For somebody to start from low level and reach the, almost the peak, I give glory honor and relation to my God. We've been told that we are to compliment our principals. We need to walk hand in hand with them. We are not to rub shoulders with them. And we know what to do to make sure that at least we better the loss, not only the students, even the teachers, and the teaching as a system. They concluded that this will encourage others to give their best as they also await their elevation. Matthew Shomi, OGTV News. And now to education. As the strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, entered its 56th day, a federal government team is currently holding a meeting with the leadership of ASU. The federal government team is led by Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ingigi, and is to, among other issues, defend government's position that the country is broke financially, while also bringing to the table reasons why ASU must return to work. ASU, on Monday, February 14, 2022, announced a four-week total and comprehensive warning strike following the inability of the union and the federal government to reach common ground on the demands of university lecturers. Some of ASU's demands include the release of revitalization funds for universities implementation of the renegotiated 2009 FGN ASU agreement and the release of earned allowances for university lecturers. Others are the deployment of the Utah's payment platform for the payment of salaries and allowances of university lecturers. Following the expiration of the initial four weeks of the warning strike, ASU had gone ahead to declare another eight weeks, saying that it was given the government more time to meet its demands. And still on education, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, has released the results of the 2022 Mock Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME, conducted on April 9. JAMP made this known in its weekly bulletin of the Office of the Registrar on Monday in Abuja. 
Reports had it that no less than 175,000 candidates sat for the examination at JAMS 757 centers nationwide. The registrar of the board, Professor Ishak Uluide, who spoke to Nan after the Saturday exercise, had expressed satisfaction over the conduct of the exercise nationwide. Oloide said that the 175,000 candidates who wrote the mock examination were limited to only one session, which started between 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. He also assured that the board and all the computer-based test CBT centers were ready for the conduct of the 2022 main examination coming up from May 6 to May 16. Reports further stated that a total of 1.8 million candidates were registered for this year's main UTME. And now to politics. Nigeria's Vice President Yemi Oshibaju on Monday officially declared his intention to contest the 2023 presidential election. He made the declaration in a short broadcast shared via his Twitter handle after months of intense speculations. Report had it that Shimbajo at a dinner he hosted at the presidential villa for the breaking of the Ramadan fast iftar on Sunday informed the APC governors of his plan to succeed his boss, President Muhammadu Buhari, whose tenure as president ends in 13 months' time. I've spoken to small and large businesses. I stood where they stood and I sat where they sat. I know their hopes and aspirations and their fears. And I believe that in those hopes and aspirations are the seeds for the great Nigeria that we all desire. I believe that the very reason why the Almighty God gave me these experiences, these insights and these opportunities is that they must be put to the use of our country and its great peoples which is why I am today with utmost humility formally declaring my intention to run for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on the platform of our great party, the All Progressives Congress. If by the grace of God and the will of the people I am given the opportunity, then I believe that first we must complete what we have started radically transforming our security and intelligence architecture, completing the reform of our justice system, focusing on adequate remuneration and welfare of judicial personnel, and ensuring justice for all and the observance of the rule of law. Oshiba Jo, who turned 65 last month, is a senior advocate of Nigeria and a former lecturer at the University of Lagos. He is also a senior pastor with the Redeemed Christian Church of God. The vice president was appointed attorney general of Lagos State in 1999 by the then governor Bola Tinumbu and held a position till 2007, implementing several judicial reforms. The new tribe group Ogun State, a coalition of Oshibaji support groups in the state, was held, has held a solidarity walk around Abeokuta town, showing their support for the ambition of Professor Yemi Oshibaju as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria come 2023 general elections. Elizabeth Esson, who was part of the walk, reports that the solidarity walk followed the declaration of the vice president of his intention to run for the position of the president of Nigeria under the flagship of the All Progressive Congress, APC. Her report. At the wake of Monday, 11th April 2022, against all speculations, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, finally declared his intention to run for the position of the President of Nigeria come 2023 general elections. I am today, with utmost humility, formally declaring my intention to run for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on the platform of our great party, the All Progressives Congress. If by the grace of God and the will of the people, I am given the opportunity. To various Oshibaju support groups, the declaration is long awaited. 
and this made them to take to the streets of Abelkuta, showing their joy and calling on all to join in their support for Professor Yemi Oshibaju's aspiration. The leader of the new tribe in Ogun State, Prince Boye Ganosu Isiaka, while speaking with journalists, speaks on the reason for their choice of Professor Yemi Oshibaju. Well, from the, from the speech that he delivered, I think everything is contained therein. He, you know, he spoke about his capacity, his capability even before coming into government. He spoke about his experience experience in government in the last seven years, you know, you know, marshalling the various challenges that we have, and also mentioned the various things that needs to be done. Number one, to continue with some of the things that is being done now, and even to better it and make it better. I think in terms of capacity and experience and readiness for the job, I want to say that uh, it's probably the number one that we have within the APC today. After the work, which took supporters from the NUJ Secretariat in Weirui, Uke, Lewa, Belkuta, Trukuto, there was a meeting of the groups at the NUT Secretariat where leaders of the various groups took turns out to assure all of their total support for the cause of Professor Yemi Oshimbaju before, during and after 2023 general elections. The new tribe is a coalition of Oshimbaju support groups under the flagship of All Progressives Congress and it cut across all the local governments of the state. Elizabeth Esson, OGTV News. While commending the initiative of the Governor of Ogun State, Prince Dako Abiodun, for signing Executive Order for Women Inclusion in Politics and Appointments, women in the state have also been enjoined to utilize their opportunity to their advantage. Respondents who spoke with OGTV News crew in Abekuta Metropolis confirmed that the governor's gesture could only be appreciated if women in the society do not fail to take up political post. Again, Elizabeth Esson gives the details. The percentage of 35% aimed at providing required representation for women in both government and politics. An executive order recently signed by the Ogun State Governor, Prince Takwa Abiodu. The executive order, which was signed during a flag off of a federal government initiative, Nigeria for Women Project in Ogun State, a program aimed at improving the economic standard of women. Governor Abiodun posited that signing the order will give women in the state equal opportunities to achieve their aspirations as well as explore their full potentials through the establishment of the Ogun State Women Inclusion and Equal Opportunities Bureau. This executive order is to demonstrate our commitment to the total and complete emancipation of women in Ogun State. The executive order is for the establishment of the Ogun State Women Inclusion and Equal Opportunities Bureau. This will ensure that we have the minimum required representation of the percent of women, not just only in government, but it's also in politics. Honorable Daisy Lemide as a lawmaker in the state, while calling on the women folk to take up the challenge, speaks on the executive order. As we all know what the constitution says, we all. So I think it is a rider to the constitution because you don't give executive order where there is no existing law on that issue. It's, nullity, it's a nullity. But in our own case, I think it is entrenched in the constitution. So the governor is right and he has done the right thing in that direction. If women can capitalize it on it, the only thing is they will not expect, because you cannot probate and reprobate at the same time. So they don't expect the governor to go back and remove the men. If they are not up to 35%, they, they, they should not expect him to, to, to now remove some people and replace them with women. Some women who spoke with OGTV News crew commended Prince Dakwa Abiodun for the initiative. They used the medium to encourage women in the state to utilize the opportunity to their gain. So what the governor has done is in the right direction. It will help to empower women. It will further help to prevent uh, violence, most especially in a political situation and probably during um, political contests and what have you. Um, aside this, it will help to increase uh, women's participation in decision-making. Women that had 
posts are doing well. So why will others won't want to perform? If it, if God don't give them the the privilege, oh, they will perform wonderfully well. The way of the opinion that advocating for women equality will bring to limelight the diversity and unique values of women in the society, which any nation cannot overlook for economic development. Elizabeth Esson, Hoji TV News. Still ahead, President Buhari lauds former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon for his support to Nigeria. Join us for details after the big development in Nigeria. President Buhari reiterated his long-standing respect and admiration for the two-time UN scribe and thanked him for initiating the call. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Gadu Bashiru, says Ban Ki-moon commended the president for his handling of security and related challenges facing the country. He expressed appreciation for the support of two prominent citizens of Nigeria, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, President's Chief of Staff and one-time UN Secretary General, and Mrs. Amina Mohammed, the current Deputy Secretary General, saying that they are among the best they had ever worked with. Regional stakeholders, in collaboration with key global players in humanitarian crisis, are strategizing towards stabilizing the Lake Chad Basin for enhanced social and economic activities. This came to the fore at the first annual International Fund of the Lake Chad Basin declared opened by the Nigerian Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju. It is shocking that instead of an improved power supply since 2013, when the nation's power sector was privatized, the grid has cumulatively failed electricity consumers more than 130 times. And on each occasion, the incidents practically grounded Nigeria and its economic activity. Binga Dekoya in this report saw the opinion of Nigerians as the national grid, which again collapsed for the third time in 24 days and the first in the month of April. According to reports, the national grid that remained epileptic with a mega 2,000 megawatts of electricity finally collapsed in the course of last week, leaving the grid devoid of output. The power generation companies, Jenkos, had confirmed that 14 power stations were idle due to grid-related challenges and the inability of the government to pay for generated electricity. While the issue was still making waves, the national grid reportedly crashed, sending the 11 distribution companies, which supplied the 36 states and federal capital territory, out of supply. And this is no doubt taking its toll on the nation's economy. It is effect on our economy. It is not small. The MSME that are the bedrock of our uh, economy, that are the growth engine room of our economy, they keep on having problems. They keep on collapse. Some of them are out of uh, business. And this is a situation whereby we are creating more unemployment. In particular, I'm concerned about Ogun State. I think Ogun State must provide us with alternative power supply. I think uh, the, uh, the present government should further on what has been done. Increase the power supply that the state is using in uh, 
Onijoko Joko, make use of the one that is in uh, the secretariat and make use of the various sets. Incomprehensibly, the problem of power has remained rigid to the huge investments sunk into the sector in the last two decades. Seemingly, intractable power crisis rocking the country has opened a new chapter. But what then could be the way out? We should have more grids. We should have many grids. Yeah, government should just implement the deregulation that, uh, the, that is in, in embedded power generating act of 2005 to make sure that people can generate and use within their own uh, community, to make sure that people can generate and use within their own state, to make sure that people can use and generate. If they have money, they can transmit to the national grid. The Minister of Power, Abubaka Aliu, however assured Nigerians that the federal government is working assiduously to deliver on the much-needed reforms in the power sector by improving the capacity and reliability of the national grid. The more reason we are facing this situation is more as a result of the shortage of gas and some of the generators have to go to maintenance. And uh, it is a scheduled maintenance and it's supposed to be a scheduled outage. But we have not envisaged that we are going to have the issues around vandalization of pipelines, which the NMPC has addressed that. Respondents say the embarrassing development, which was the thought in 24 days, is coming at a time of spike in the cost of diesel and scarcity of petrol to further compound the woes of all Nigerians. There seems to be a boom in the number and revenue of people enlisting in power generating set repairs in Nigeria. Companies and shops have increased in sorting after their services for survivor. For Wura Adisonwo looks at the impact of the generator repairers in the present day Nigeria. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. This saying of Eleanor Roosevelt is much applicable for those who now illuminate the land of poor living when darkness seems to envelop it. I prefer the banker. Okay, why? Because he's educated, he's more educated. Despite all that, I still prefer a farmer. I will choose the banker. Okay, why? <laughs> I think the banker is more, is more educated than the other one. They look filthy, but their pockets are deep. Customer buy it is in your pocket, buy it there is money in generator repair jobs. Generating site repairers are now everywhere, working silently to build the nation from the darkness. Research confirms they are now preferred to any other professions in the land. If Nigeria gives us power, we don't need the generator repairers. Yes, if we have power, who will I have to buy a generator for when there is power? If I can get power for even if it's six hours in a day, it's enough. Are you serious? Yes. When you stay in a place, you don't get power three days, one week. Ah. That's why those people, they can do what they like. Because they know you will always come back to them. When there is no light, you need their service. And they can do what they like. They can play you. It's kind of said to tell you this is what is bad, spend your money and the thing is not done. So it's, it is the country that left us in their mess. Reason for this is obvious. Life is short. But then, man wants to live amidst great competition. I know it's lucrative because many people are rushing into it really because I believe it's a job that within two or three years of learning, it can, it can stand on your own. Just like all these uh, air dressers and uh, other uh, saloon, uh, this thing. The written set repairers are riffs of the moment with improved status, indifference to the field around them. For my own observation, I prefer a generator repairer than a banker. Because uh, if you are a banker and there is no generator for you to use, there is no way the, the management will downsize the number of staff and it will affect them. Olanri Wajibabatunde 
is 46. He attests to the fact that no farmer or banker could win him in a contest when it comes to wealth. For those who could afford the luxury of mobile fans, the hope seems to be on site. Adefowura, Adesongo, OGTV News. Islam is a religion of peace and Muslims should showcase this during Ramadan and the forthcoming election by having the fear of God. This was the submission of the guest lecturer Abdul Latif Ademoyi Yasatar at the Ramadan lecture organized by Family FM at Zulika Abiola Islamic and Arabic Center at Belkuta. Runke Adeyemi reports. Ramadan is the ninth and the earliest month of the Islamic calendar. Muslims, however, use the month of Ramadan to focus on their relationship with God, reflect on their lives, and spend quality time with family and friends. Against this backdrop, Family FM Abel Kuta organized its annual Ramadan lecture with this year's theme, 2023 elections, expectation of Nigerians, Islamic perspectives for its listeners. On the forthcoming general election, the guest lecturer, Abdul Latif Ademoye Yasatar, admonished Muslim faithful leaders and followers to act appropriately. It's to be characters to the heart of nation in Nigeria. To be good present uh, and to uh, make sure they're doing their role as well in Nigeria. Uh, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advised all his prophets to be doing. The host and the general manager, family FM engineer Kweolu Wakila Sho, emphasized the need to focus on the upcoming elections with full representations as well as participation. We still see that the way at which people get their vote bought is still not uh, good enough. You know, so people still need to be informed that 1,000 Naira will do a lot of harm in the next four years. It's about the right candidate that will take this country to its people. So we need to be more involved as individuals, as Nigerians. Because this country, no matter where we go, it is our country. He noted that Ramadan is a time of hope and renewal of their faith in Allah. At Derunke Adiyemi, OGTV News. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, will on May 30 rearrange former National Publicity Secretary of People's Democratic Party, PDP, Chief Odisa Mefu, on allegations bordering on 400 million Naira fraud. Metu is expected to be rearranged before Justice Emeka Nwite of a federal high court, Abuja. The retrial of the ex-PDP spokesman had been reassigned to Nwite, the new judge in the Abuja division. Prior to the reassignment, the matter was before a sister judge, Obiora Eguatu. The matter was assigned to Justice Eguatu last year following his transfer to Abuja division of the court. Eguatu had fixed October 14, 2021 for Metu's rearrangement after the Court of Appeal's decision which nullified the trial court's judgment. The Court of Appeal, Abuja, had on December 16, 2020 nullified a federal high court judgment that convicted and sentenced Mentu to seven years imprisonment for money laundering. In a unanimous decision, a three-man panel of justices of the appellate court held that the judgment of the trial judge Okon Abank delivered against Mentu on February 25, 2020 was tainted with bias. The United Nations Humanitarian Coordinator for Nigeria, Matthias Schimmel, has said over 4 million Nigerians in the region are expected to face the severe pain of food insecurity in the approaching lean season. Shamel said this 
at an advocacy event held in Abuja on food security and nutrition in northeast Nigeria. He noted that a total of 8.4 million Nigerians will need humanitarian support in the northeast, while 4.1 million people face severe pain of food insecurity in the northeast. Shemel, however, said up to $351 million is needed to provide humanitarian support for people in northeast Nigeria. He said across northeast Nigeria today, 8.4 million people need humanitarian assistance. Alarmingly, almost half of this crisis affected people. 4.1 million are expected to face the severe pain of food insecurity in the approaching lean season. The head of special duties, Federal Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Nadia Soso, said food security and nutrition of this affected population in the north remains a priority. Up next is business news with Adibola Oshomeji. Join us again. Welcome to the business segment of the news. Federal government is expecting more than 500 megawatts of electricity from interconnected mini grids being developed by the Rural Electrification Agency. Also, the government blamed Friday's national grid collapse on the sabotage of the country's power infrastructure by vandals, stressing that the I code Ekpene Kalaba 330 KV tower was vandalized. In a series of tweets via his official Twitter handle on Sunday, the special advisor to the president on infrastructure, Ahmed Zakari, said that Ria had been spending billions of naira on renewable energy and mini grids. Commenting on the collapse of Nigeria's power grid, which occurred on Friday, Zakari blamed it on sabotage, stressing that this act by citizens was difficult to comprehend. The Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, has said that the phone numbers not linked to a national identity number, NIN, will remain barred from making calls until the affected subscribers obey the directive. A statement by the commission told telecoms consumers whose subscriber identity model SIM cards are barred from making calls that affected SIMs will not be unbarred by the service providers until they are linked with the national identification numbers NINs of the SIM holders. The Nigerian government had ordered telecommunication operators to restrict customers who are yet to link their NIN to their SIM cards for making calls. The directive took effect from April 4 after affected customers were disconnected from the communication networks. The action which left many affected Nigerians disorganized was part of government effort to fight insecurity in the country. The World Bank has advised Nigeria and other African countries to focus on digital development as too many of Africa's expanding youth population will be denied the opportunity to live up to their potential with the current incremental pace of economic and social advancement. This was contained in a new report by the Washington-based Digital technologies offer an opportunity to unlock new pathways for rapid economic growth, innovation, job creation, and access to services that would have been unimaginable only a decade ago. According to the report, access to the internet, however, remains out of reach for most people in the continent, with only 22% reporting having access in 2017. Nigeria's non-oil exports have fallen by 39% from 6.914 trillion naira to 4.194 trillion naira in 10 years, according to an analysis of the National Bureau of Statistics Foreign Trade Statistics. Specifically, figures shows that the 4.194 trillion naira non-oil export recorded in 2021 is 39.34% lower than the 6.914 trillion naira non-oil exports recorded in 2012. In 2012, Nigeria's total export amounted to 22.446 trillion naira. Out of this number, 15.531 trillion naira was crude oil export, 
while 6.914 trillion naira was non-oil export. The non-oil export comprised 30.8% of the total exports that year. However, in 2021, the nation's total exports were estimated at 19.057 trillion naira, with the non-oil segment occupying 4.194 trillion naira. The African Export Import Bank, Africzim Bank, has launched a series of credit facilities totaling $4 billion aimed at alleviating the negative economic impact wrought on Africa by the ongoing war in Ukraine. In a press statement, the Pan-African Multilateral Lender disclosed that the loan program is called the Ukraine Crisis Adjustment Trade Financing Program for Africa. It was approved by the bank's board in late March 2022. And that was business news. Back to Iyabo for the rest of our bulletin.